Hey, what's up guys? John here. Some of America's largest landlords filed evictions during the eviction moratorium. And many of these landlords made record-breaking profits during this moratorium. How is this possible when most small mom-and-pop landlords either got wiped out or they got pushed, many of which got pushed into hard financial times? Well, the more research I do, the more that I look into this, the more interesting and polarizing this situation, this subject really is. It's interesting from a place of, you know, what the rich really do versus what they say and, you know, what everyone else is made to believe. Everyone else is made to believe that the moratorium is in place, that they simply just follow suit and that the landlord should, you know, help if they can and simply pay pay now, pay the mortgages now, pay everything now, and then maybe they get some money back. That, that's the narrative. That's what's being told to everyone. But the wealthy corporations, I'm talking, the, I mean, the biggest homeowners in America are all doing things that if any small mom-pop landlord tried to do, it would get front page headlines. But they buried this subject and this topic for a long time. Take a look at this. Four corporate landlords engaged in 15,000, 15,000 evictions despite the moratorium. House report says during the pandemic, the Seagull Group and L.A. Las Vegas-based real estate firm told staff members to enforce tenants out of their properties through coercive tactics as removing air conditioning in Vegas. So, you, you know, Vegas, maybe 100, 110 degrees. You remove the air conditioning, right? Calling child protective agencies without cause and threatening an eviction despite the federal moratorium. Congressional investi investigators say in a report published on Wednesday, the report from the House Select Subcommittee on the this crisis alleges that four corporate landlords, a secret group, Pretty and Partners, which purchased about 30% of Zillow's inventory when they tried to do, uh, you know, the iBuyer program, they had to unload about 6,000, almost 7,000 homes. Uh, Pretium stepped in and bought, I believe it was 2,500 homes from them. Uh, Invitation Homes, which owns about 90, 85, 90, 92,000 homes. Um, and Veteran Management engaged in a combined 15,000 evictions despite the temporary eviction moratorium from this group ordered in September 2020. Rather than working with the cost burden tenants abiding by the applicable eviction moratoriums and accepting federal rental assistance, they, the federal uh, rental assistance that they talk a lot about, in California, they've only issued 2% of those funds. In Florida, 2% of those funds. In New York, I believe it was between 2 and 3% of the funds. So a lot of this money that they said was uh, being sent out to tenants, being sent out to landlords, there was a lot of red tape and they simply didn't have access to it. The tenants would have to fill out a lot of burdens and paperwork. The landlords would have to, you know, do their fair share. Everyone would have to kind of come together and work together. And it really, uh, it didn't, it didn't play out the way in which, you know, they're making it seem here, where they could just simply file some paperwork and get the money. If they could just file paperwork and get the money, I'm sure they would have just done just that. Because who would want to go through all the headache? Uh, if they could easily just, you know, file a piece of paper and get a check in the mail. These companies with properties across 28 states expedite evictions above all else. According to the committee investigator, the Seagull Group, which owns and operates about 12,000 hotel rooms, many rented by the week, filed at least 774 evictions during the moratorium, which was extended by the Biden administration and lasted until August. NBC News published a story in 2020 that described evictions during the pandemic by Invitation Homes, Pretium, and Veteran. The moratorium did not prohibit all evictions. It gave tenants the opportunity to claim that they had suffered an adverse impact that resulted from the pandemic. The prospect to protect themselves from being forced out of the residence. You know, California, they just extended the moratorium. Los Angeles, they just extended the moratorium. Uh, Los Angeles, the entire county extended until uh, June of 2023. But Los Angeles proper extended without an a without a deadline right there's no end date before it was 30 day 60 day 90 day extensions they did that for about two years now they're moving in the direction where there's just no end date and so you ask yourself these corporate landlords what are they going to do do you think they're going to sit there and just hold the weight with over 700,000 tenants just in la county alone not paying no they're going to look at the opportunity and the opportunity is going to be all of these mom and pop landlords that simply are not paying they're going to go out there and start buying up these properties and they're going to do anything, anything to get those tenants out. And then they're going to increase rents and increase rents and increase rents. And the more that they increase them, the more you know, challenging it's going to be for everyday you know, renters. Right. And so when people right now are uh, leaning in the direction of we need a moratorium or we should not pay rent, just know that you may be able to get through 
the first stage, which is not paying rent to the small mom and pop landlord, but stage two, which is where corporations step in and start taking property, you're not gonna be able to do the same thing because these corporations have so much money, so much power, so much control that you're not just gonna be able to, uh, you know, the tenants just not gonna be able to shake their finger and make the problem go away. It's just gonna get harder. The moratorium did not prohibit all evictions. It gave tenants the opportunity to claim that they've suffered, right? The House report does not expectably say that the evictions were illegal, right? The House report, and we don't hear about that. The House report does not expectably say that evictions were illegal. In a statement, Segal Group Executive Vice President and General Counsel said the company was surprised by the report had been issued without the Segal Group being called out or interviewed for the report. Segal Group has at times been committed to abiding by the letter and in the spirit of the law applicable in our operations. We will continue to put roofs over people's heads and keep people employed. This is what we have always done. Siegel cares. But at the end of the day, they are a business and businesses need to make money to stay in business. If we went to a cafeteria or a cafe, you know, this cappuccino here, if I were to go into a cafe and, and simply order a cappuccino and take this cappuccino and just walk out with it and say, you know what, someone else said it's free, who is in the wrong? Would it be me? Would it be the cafe or would it be the third party, right? That's up for debate. And so I'm telling you the, the cafe, the Seagull Group, is likely not going to be the one just sitting there issuing free cappuccinos all day, every day, right? They're going to be the one that's going to say, you know what, you want to come in here and you want this cappuccino, you're going to pay for it, right? And if you're not going to pay for it, then we're going to shut the door and security is going to deal with you, right? That, it's unfortunate, right? It, it's unfortunate that it's going to come to this, but it's the big question is, is Siegel what they're doing? I'm, I'm, of course, is, you know, way, I don't know if this is what they're doing, what they're claiming, you know, that's, it's unethical. It's not right. But at the end of the day, they should be able to collect rent, right? If they sign a lease with a tenant, the tenant says that they're going to pay rent. The tenant should pay rent. If they're not going to pay rent. The tenant should likely relocate to somewhere else. Maybe the Seagull Group could work with them or another company could work with them and try to find another housing accommodation for them and relocate the tenant. You know, if this was a, a 30 day or 60 day or 90 day thing, it would be one thing, but we're approaching three years in, in many places where this is still going on. And so if, if tenants aren't going to pay, then landlords are just going to get washed out. The secret group is going to roll in or any other group, not just throwing them under the bus because who knows? These are all allegations. This could be completely false, but these other corporations are going to roll in and just take over. Right. And that's why I do believe that this narrative in which tenants are the, you know, they need to be taken care of above the landlord, I think is, is out of line. I think that it should be between the tenants. It should be between the landlords and all of these, uh, all, like, all of these like moratoriums and all these things that they're trying to roll out. It's only going to hurt the little guy, the little girl, you know, the la landlord, the mom, pop landlord, the tenant. These are the people that's going to get hurt. The large corporation, this is like a Christmas celebration for them. This is Christmas Eve. You know, they're 11 years old. They're hoping they get that present the next day. They open the box the next day. The present's there. This is what this is for them. This is Christmas Eve. These moratoriums, all this financial distress, they're going to roll in. It's going to get crazy. Uh, asked about the Seagull Group's connection. The select subcommittee spokesperson said this select subcommittee endeavored for months to get documents and information from Seagull, which initially refused to respond to the subcommittee's request only after sending a public letter from the chairman nearly four months after the initial request threatening further action, the Seagull agreed to cooperate and produce minimal documents. In a news release, November 9th, the subcommittee said the Seagull Group had failed to produce the key documents and information. Veteran management did not immediately respond to a request for the comment. In a statement, Pretnium spokesperson said the company has always complied with the moratorium. No resident covered by a valid moratorium or valid declaration has it ever been evicted from their homes for non-payment of rent. Spokesperson said, in fact, we have voluntarily extended the moratorium for residents covered by valid declaration beyond the expiration. Nothing in today's report takes issue with either of these facts. The spokesperson for the invitation home said it responded to multiple requests from the House subcommittee over the past year in a time when the focus should be on adding much needed supply to the country's housing market. It is disappointing that the committee chose instead to pursue a fault finding mission, right? A fault finding mission. Who is at fault? That's the big question. Is it one of these large corporations? Is it the third party? Is it the tenant? You know, I'll leave that up to you guys to decide. 
who do you think is at fault here? I believe that this is this is going to be the ma the biggest and most massive wealth transfer we've ever seen, and it's all happening right now. It's happening before our eyes. What do you think about it? The next three years, it's going to be huge in real estate. The biggest, biggest wealth transfer. Drop your comments below. Subscribe here. Hit the like button. Also, subscribe to my second channel. It's going to be a uh, interactive show and podcast when I get back from uh, right now I'm in a small town in Spain when I get back probably in the next five days or a week uh, I'm gonna get on that that's gonna be really really exciting and uh, by no means am I saying that you know what they are doing what the landlords are doing is right or what the tenant is doing is right or what the third party is doing is right I'm simply laying out the facts if you sell a cappuccino should you be paid for the cappuccino drop your comments below let's talk about it and I'll catch you guys in the next video if you're interested in being sponsored on my YouTube channel, visit cashnow.video forward slash sponsor and fill out the application.